Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan, and time and time again we see new media streaming devices show up on the market that claim to have the fastest processor and support all the latest and greatest video codecs for streaming movies and TV shows in conjunction with a network media server like Jellyfin. And in the past, I've talked a lot about how those very devices can work on our channel. But looking back, every time I get done reviewing one of those things, I've come to realize that they're pretty much all basically the same. You're typically looking at an ARM-based set-top box running a heavily customized version of Android that's been locked down to focus on accessing a media collection stored on a local hard drive or maybe on a network storage share so you can watch your content. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this kind of a solution, and for the most part I've praised these dedicated media streamers for offering a lot more functionality than a cheap streaming stick would. Things like custom HDMI EDID modes, color space conversion, and audio pass-through settings that would satisfy most home theater enthusiasts. But in the end, these are still very special purpose-built devices, and in some cases they can demand a pretty high cost. But what if I told you that there was a different option, for a reasonably priced and completely silent media streamer that could serve as your main outlet for everything from movie streaming to web browsing, and even some light gaming or home theater use? Well, that's what I'm going to try to demonstrate today using this thing right here. The Minix Neo Z300 0DB is the very extravagant name of what's really nothing more than a standard mini PC using the Core i3 N300, which is the 8 core upgrade to my favorite Intel N100 low power embedded CPU. And using a PC in place of a traditional streaming device isn't any kind of a new idea really. In fact, a number of years ago, it was pretty common to see people running custom-built home theater PCs in their entertainment centers, which we ourselves did for a very long time. But with the rise of more and more competent smart TVs and streaming sticks, the idea of building a loud and power-hungry computer just to watch some movies didn't really attract the same level of interest that it used to. But thanks to that Intel N300 CPU, we're getting a relatively fast processor with no more than a 7 watt TDP. And as far as the hardware goes, I have to admit that I was really surprised with the Minix Neo once I opened it up. The entire PC feels very solid with its aluminum housing, but keep in mind that since the CPU is going to be passively cooled, the top is going to get pretty hot during regular use, so you should keep that in mind. Don't put anything on it or touch it while it's running. Along with the PC itself, you also get some accessories like a couple of Wi-Fi antennas, a face mount, a 12 volt power adapter, and an HDMI cable to plug this directly into your TV, which was really well appreciated. Hooking everything up was also pretty simple. The PC gives you a couple of HDMI ports, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet jack, two USB 2.0 ports, and on the other side, you also get a micro SD card slot, 10 gigabit USB-C and dual USB 3A connectors, along with a 3.5mm headphone jack. It comes with Windows 11 installed out of the box, but nothing is going to stop you from running a regular Linux distro or even a purpose-built streaming OS. For the sake of demonstration, I'll be sticking with Windows, and my goal here is basically to install some extra software that will get this thing working like a conventional streaming box, to show you how you can watch some movies from it on a Jellyfin media server, and I have to admit, I don't know where this installation came from or how they activated it, so if you're worried about it, you can reinstall Windows very easily by downloading a Windows installer from Microsoft on another PC, but either way, once you're done with that whole process, you can begin to set up all of your media streaming specific software. For this, I decided I wanted to try using Kodi, which is a free and open source media center software, along with the Jellyfin plugin, which allows your Jellyfin library from another server to sync locally to Kodi, and it provides a very polished way to access all of your media. To install Kodi, just head on over to Kodi.tv, click the blue download button at the top of the page, and grab the 64-bit installer file. After that, installation should be self-explanatory. Run the installer, keep clicking next until you get an option to install, and let that process finish. Once you have Kodi installed, you'll need to grab the file to install the Jellyfin streaming plugin, which I'll link in the description, and it should save in your downloads folder as repository.jellyfin.kodi.zip. Once you have that file, open Kodi, go into the settings menu, and navigate to add-on browser, and from there select install from zip file. If it asks you to change the settings to allow installation from unknown sources, go back into settings and enable the unknown sources option, then select the file again to install. At that point, you've installed the repository that allows you to get the actual Jellyfin Kodi add-on, so now you can just go to the Kodi add-on browser, select install from repository, choose Kodi Jellyfin add-ons, followed by video add-ons, 
and then select the Jellyfin add-on and choose Install. Afterwards, you should be prompted to input your server details, so I went ahead and logged into the Jellyfin server that hosts all of our media, and when prompted, I set the add-on to use add-on mode rather than native mode to access our library. Finally, you can just select the option to sync all of your media libraries into the add-on, and at this point, you'll just have to wait for the entire database to copy from your Jellyfin server over to Kodi. And once that's done, you'll have a pretty slick Media Center UI for browsing through all of the content on your media server from the mini PC. And I found this experience to work very smoothly in all of the different content that I tried. And of course, because this is a fanless mini PC, I never once heard any fan noise or anything coming from the computer, which made watching movies very, very enjoyable, and actually is better than a lot of the higher end streaming devices on the market we've tested, which do include little fans that make a very small amount of noise that's absolutely fine in a cabinet. But if you're very sensitive to noise, this is a good way to cut it out completely. Another goal that I had for this project was to make it work more like a dedicated media streamer, and what I mean by that is right now we're using a keyboard and mouse to traverse the menus in Kodi and Windows while we're actually using the PC. And I think that this is perfectly fine, but for some folks they might not want to drag a wireless keyboard over to their couch when they just want to try to enjoy a movie. So to try to fix that, I went ahead and programmed a software solution extending a previous project that I showed off on this channel called ECP EMU Server. And what this program does is it actually runs in the background on your PC, and it broadcasts messages on the network to claim that your PC is actually a Roku media streamer device, and that it's compatible with the Roku Wi-Fi remote control protocol. And what this means is that if you have any universal remote that supports network control of Roku devices, like our older Logitech Harmony remotes for example, all you have to do is add another network device and click on the fake Roku that pops up in the My Harmony app, and ECP EMU server will actually allow you to control your computer using the Harmony remote. There's no extra setup required past putting one configuration file in the main folder for ECP EMU server, and then you can actually replicate this on your own computer with any computer you have connected to your local network. It doesn't have to be this mini PC, it'll work on any computer running Windows 10 or newer. And I think that this is a really good way to bump up the experience to that of what you would actually expect from a dedicated media streamer device. So if you want to try this program out, I'll leave a link to the GitHub repository down in the description. I just made these updates very recently, so if you have trouble, go ahead and open an issue and we'll try to get that resolved. But with all the good that we can get out of this mini PC, there are a few limitations that we're going to run into, which are just the nature of trying to use a PC for content consumption. The biggest of which is that most streaming services, like Netflix for example, just don't have very good support for desktop PCs anymore, mostly because they don't implement the same level of DRM that they can get on smart TVs and smart streaming boxes, so that means you're not going to be able to play back Netflix at 4K for example. And this might be a deal breaker for some of you out there, I would completely understand why, but in comparison to a dedicated streaming device like a Zadoo, which also does not have any Netflix compatibility or certification, you're not going to be missing out on too much. It's all about your perspective and whether or not you're interested in trying to build your own local media server rather than having to rely on subscription-based content online. But again, this doesn't even scratch the surface of what you could do with a configuration like this. Because it's just a regular PC, you can install Linux, try out OSMC, one of the many different media center oriented Linux distributions that's free and available for you to download online. And as for the hardware itself, we got just about the level of performance that we expected from an Intel N300 based mini PC, which is really surprising given that this is passively cooled and doesn't require any extra cooling fan and doesn't make any noise. But I do think that Minix kind of missed out on an opportunity by only including DDR4 in this system, when Alder Lake does have a DDR5 memory controller, and many of the N100 PCs that we've reviewed on this channel do actually take advantage of DDR5 memory. DDR4 is going to be a little bit cheaper for the amount of memory that you can get, but very recently there was some news that Micron is winding down the last of their DDR4 production, who were the last major manufacturers of DDR4 memory chips, so I don't think it's going to make much of a difference in the long run. I feel like it's absolutely adequate for what I showed off in this video, and I'm really impressed with how much performance Minix was able to squeeze out of a fanless system like this. 
So if you have any other ideas for what you might be able to use a completely silent, passively cooled mini PC like this for in a home theater system, go ahead and leave your comments down in the comments section below. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.